Phil, thank you. Phil LeBeau with the latest there. And with Main Street reeling, one thing Wall Street can do to help create jobs is to dig up funding for infrastructure projects. You might think after everything Phil just said that airport renovations wouldn't be a priority right now. Air service is down sharply from last year and many airports have lost carriers. But funding for airport projects through the debt markets is actually picking up. With me now for more on that is Gary Hall. He is partner and head of investment banking at Siebert Williams Shank & Company. Gary, it's good to have you. You've done a number of these airport deals lately. Why are investors interested? So, Kelly, I guess, uh, first of all, investors are still uh, incurring a tremendous amount of cash. Inflows back to bond funds are really high. Coupon payments and, and bonds are maturing to give uh, investors uh, the, the, the thrust to, to, to reinvest. Um, but they're chasing yield, and the airport sector, more than most, uh, uh, has more yield um, in our municipal market. So we've seen um, a slightly uptick in the transportation sector uh, as a whole, wow. where we're slightly up than we were year over year in 2019. Airports are slightly down, but we're, uh, since the DFW deal that we, uh, we did in July, we see that we've seen the market open up significantly, and we have about $3 billion of airport deals done since then. Wow. So to be clear, the deal you mentioned, Dallas-Fort Worth was the first airline deal since the pandemic began. That was done in July. Since then, uh, there's also been a bond offering about a billion dollars for uh, LAX. So these are the biggest airports in the country. Gary, what happens to some of the smaller airports, the ones that might service enormous regions but not a lot of population, are they going to be left out here? You know, I don't know if they're going to be left out, Kelly, but I can tell you the process that we have to undertake with airport credits and all credits is a little different post-COVID than it's been before. We're seeing investors ask not only a lot of questions about the operating metrics of these enterprises, but delving into subjective factors. For example, uh, we've been on a number of calls where investors want to know, you know, what has been the responsiveness of governments to, to COVID? Uh, have they opened up the, the economy too soon? Uh, are governments prepared to make uh, the tough decisions in making cost-cutting measures uh, or staff reductions? So these subjective factors are, some, are, are things that we're preparing on our issuer clients to be able to answer and giving confidence yeah. that uh, they have the political will to make the tough decisions, and whether it be an airport or a water sewer or a general obligation. Problem. And you've also done work, uh, you've done an issuance for the Chicago Transit Authority, for the Regional Transit Authority of New Orleans. So is this because these maturities are long enough that bond investors say, okay, it's five or it's 10 years, so by then the economy is going to be back to normal, I'll be fine, and I don't think that, you know, just yesterday we were talking about J.P. Morgan in New York City is going to allow employees to work permanently from home uh, for some of the time. And they said one benefit of this was that it would lighten the load on public transit. Well, I'm sure the public transit system doesn't necessarily see that as a benefit right now. Uh, so my point to you is how long do investors have to get their money back here? Well, a couple of things. So first, uh, we, we are pricing the, the Chicago Transit uh, Authority deal tomorrow. So uh, we do not want to steal the thunder and say that it's done yet. Uh, but we have, we've had a, a bevy of investor calls and think that we're going to uh, have a tremendous amount of demand there. You know, keep in mind, these are 30-year bets for the most part. Wow. Um, and so when investors are looking to park money for 30 years, uh, these essential services will be back at some point. Um, and these are monopolistic assets for governments. And so uh, at some point, we're going to see a, a, a resumption of, of, of travel in airports and, and ridership on, on major transit systems. And investors know that, especially for these large metropolitan areas. Yeah, that is a great point. On a 30-year time horizon, maybe you feel a little bit more comfortable uh, going out on the ledge uh, for the comeback yeah, in these sure. major markets. Gary, it's great to have you. Thank you, sir, for your right. time. Appreciate it. Gary Thank Hall you. is with Appreciate Siebert it. Williams and Shank. Still ahead, as the U.S. continues to make strides in the search for a COVID vaccine, China says it's already started deploying one. We're going to take you inside the country's vaccine factory. Plus, as Palantir opens its books to the investing world, the CEO is opening up about his feelings with some strong words for Silicon Valley. Those details and the car stock that's outperforming Tesla this year. Stay with us. Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Ask your investment advisor about BAM insured Muni bonds. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. 
In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, and adding BAM insured municipal bonds to your portfolio is easy. Talk to your investment advisor, visit buildamerica.com, or look for BAM eligible bonds on the Perform Portfolio Management System. BAM. Build America Mutual. 